Hello. Hi. Hi. Hello, everyone. Hi, hi. Hi, Vera. Welcome. Welcome. Hi, hi. hi. Welcome. So we thought that there were some difficulties, so my team and I waited for a bit. Ah, uh, sorry, sorry for no that. No problem, no problem. Okay, so so we can just maybe just uh start a bit late till everybody uh shows up. Yeah. Okay. Fine. So I have a few assistant with me today, and then they changed their name to uh, Maggie Cube, and then the name. Okay. Hello, okay. everyone. Yeah, yeah. Most welcome. Most welcome. All right. So um. So we have a. Uh, Mendesco Academy today, Farah, to our, our partner from Italy. So I want to introduce my assistant. So uh, today we have Kelly. So Kelly is our, uh, one of our most experienced uh, STEM tutor in my whole bit. So because we, I know that it's a young, younger class, so I don't want my, an old man to be the instructor. So I um, asked Kelly to be our leading instructor tonight. So we also have uh, Rachel, Jeff, and Kiwi today. Hello, Kelly. Yeah, hello. Hi. Yes. Hi. So um, they will, uh, my assistant will help me with uh, technical support if there's anything with the login between the students. Great, great. great. Okay. We're waiting for a little bit now until no all no students are going to join in a few minutes. Hello, Noridin. You can unmute Hello. a little. Hello. You can unmute and then mute yourself. <laughs> Wonderful, amazing. Oh, oh, they are ready. <laughs> so maybe uh, Vera, can you make uh, Kelly as the host so she can maybe uh, share the screen? Kelly. Or, yeah, Kelly will be the host for today. Yeah, okay, Kelly. Co-host. So I can see that some of the students have their own micro bit at home, so yeah. that's great. Kelly, going to be uh, make a co-host for Kelly? Yes, yes, yes. yes. So she can uh, share the okay. screen. Yes, okay, of course. thanks. Fine, Kelly. Can you yes, also make me as co-host so I can uh, send yes. the login details if the students have a problem with logging in, so I can do it through the chat? Yes, yes, yes. Fine. Loading. So did you? No, that's not me. Because I think uh, one of my assistants used the same name. Ah, uh -huh. yeah. So there should be a two Jason. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, Jason Chan. Yes. Fine. Uh, not yet, not yet. You you put the wrong one. So maybe Kiwi, yeah. you maybe uh, can you re rename yourself? Okay, going. Uh, I will read it one more time. I'll rename uh, myself as Jason. Maggie Cube Jason. Meg, uh, Maggie Cube Jason, yes. Already yes. there. No? No, no. The one with Jason Chan is the is the co-host. The other one. So I will. Okay. No. Once again, I okay. will repeat it. I will uh, re uh, make co-host. I think this is the one. Yeah. Correct. Right. Yes. Correct. Yes, great. Yes. Okay. Is the chat function being enabled? Okay. The Let's chat check. function. Yeah. Let me check. Oh uh, no.
Yes. Farah, is it? Can you uh, enable the chat, the conversation, in in Zoom? So just in case, if some of the student uh, cannot log in, I can just send the username and password to them. Um, uh, let me check. Uh,
please, can you send me a message on the uh, chat box? Give it a try from your end. I couldn't see the chat box. Couldn't see the chat box. You should be able to find the uh, the feature on the um, on the control uh, meeting control. Can you find it on the meeting control? It should be able to enable you to 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 uh, turn it on or turn it off. The the meet the chat room. Maybe uh, maybe the holes are uh, 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 ventisco, ventisco, is it? Um, are you the holes? Um, I I think you can try it. I mean, because you created the meeting room. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think we can start, right? Okay, sure. Fine. Any issues with the accounts, you can just uh, uh, text me or uh, send me an email uh, so I can uh, just send it to any, any of the students if you're not able to. Sure, do sure, it sure. I'll talk with you through LinkedIn. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. No issues. I am okay, on sure. I'll, I'll have, I have LinkedIn no, open, so I'll chat with you through LinkedIn if there's Okay. Welcome all so, students all over the world to our STEM and uh, microbit uh, workshop with Dr. Jason, with Kelly and Rochelle. Yes, so maybe uh, to start off with, uh, thank you very much for uh, working with Vistaco Academy. This is our first partnership. I hope um, our first step can build uh, many successes for our uh, young students to learn programming, microbit and also AI. So this is our workshop one. We would. Um, let you guys have experience tasting our platform called Yuna on Microbit. So without further ado, I would like to introduce our lead instructor today, uh, Kelly, to share the screen and then we can go log into our platform and start the class. So hello everyone, I'm Kelly and I'm going to teach you to how to use Yuna and to learn some basic microbit programming. And then first of all, I would like to 
uh, let you guys to log into the unit platform first. And in case if you can't log in and then you can just speak out to let me know and then I will assign some accounts for you. So after you have logged in, I should see your name is in green. If you can- uh, Kelly will go over in. how we log into Yuna. So first of all, please uh, type the type the website link at the top, and then you can just directly type unit.study. And then you should see the U in blue, the logo. And you should successfully go to the web page like this. And then after that, you should you should see the login Yuna, the button on the top, at the top left hand corner. So if you're going to log in with your email, then you can use sign in with your email. So if you have an email with Microsoft or Google or Facebook, so you can just click, for example, you use a Gmail to register, you can just click sign in with Google and then just insert the password, your personal password. If you use a other email account, or let's say you forgot your email password, then you can click log in using one-time password in email by in, inserting the email you register with uh, Batisco Academy, and then you should get a one-time password for your email personal account. Actually, they can use their accounts, their personal accounts. Yes, they can use the email, the, the email which they register with you for this workshop. And then once you log in, you should see a section which says um, 20201, today's date, and then BYEC workshop number one, Michael Bit. So let's say if, uh, if in any case you forgot your password, we have some uh, dummy student account which we can assign you immediately. So if you have problem uh, logging into account, you can just uh, shout and then we can just assign you a dummy account then you don't have to uh, log in with your, password, with your email, sorry. So, so anyone um, forgot so, their email? So, so two of the students, when we create the account, we identify that there's some problems with your email. So if your email is showing on the Word document, which uh, Kelly just uh, shared with us, you can use the username and password, which uh, we assign to you. So what you see in this screen is uh, we have a username, UNA, ACA underscore three for, uh, for the email on, on the table. So if your email is um, shown on the share screen, please use the username and password which we assigned to you because there were some problems why we create the account for with your registered email address. So if there's any other uh, participant who has problem logging in or forgot the uh, email and password, you can just let us know. We can just assign uh, one user name and password for you straight away.
Jofara, do we do you need an account from us? Uh, can't hear you. You mute yourself. Uh, yes, of course. Yes, maybe you can use number five. Maybe number Kelly five. can type uh, uh, for this academy for assign to uh, account number five. So Farah yeah. can use that one. Mm -hmm. You can write my email. Yeah, okay, fine. So anybody else uh, forgot the email and password, you can just let me and Kelly know. So remember, if you're using the account which we assigned to you, which we call the dummy account, when you uh, go to the login page, you select the last one, login using username and password. So Farah, can you can you log in? Fine. So after you log in, you should see uh with today's date saying uh VYEC workshop number one micro fit. You can click on to that. So once you log in, you should see the session with today's title, and then you can click onto it. So once you have logged in and now I'm going to press the assemble, then you should see a pop-up showing on your screen. And then after you join the session, you should see the screen that I'm showing right now. And you should got a red little man at the right hand corner telling you the lesson is about to start. Can, because right now I don't see anyone log into a platform yet. So have you guys having difficulties? They have to search. Can you show them again the uh, platform, uh, the uh, login, the login. Uh, URL? URL. Okay. First of all, step number one, they have to go to the platform, uh, to any browser. Yes, just open, for example, Google Chrome, your browser. Google Chrome, step just, number one. Yes, yeah, step number one, open a browser, Google Chrome. Yes. And then yes. Uh, insert una.study, una.study. Dot study. Yes, una. Yes, dot study. So Kelly just show us there on the browser, una.study and then just click enter. So can any everybody see what uh, Kelly is showing on the screen? You should see a blue U and then UNA. Can everyone see, get to this stage? uh preferably if they i will uh, share my screen so i can show okay. them okay sure uh from my end 
Okay. Maybe. Um, sharing my screen. This will stop others. I will uh, just give yes. the uh, permission okay. to. No, I will give first of all multiple participants. So I will not, you will not uh, be disconnected. Uh, you can see my screen. Yeah, so I have just, uh, yeah, Google, uh, Chrome. I'm using uh, Chrome just now, the browser. And just you have to type www or just UNA study. Okay, you're following with me. Uh, students there, Noor, everyone. Muhammad Nasser, Suhair. Students, you can un unmute yourselves and just let me know if you uh, just type the uh, URL in the URL, una.study. And then now you are in the platform. Once you are in the platform, you have to go to log in Yuna. Log in. Yes. Which is? So you should see uh, three options. So if you register with your email, if your email is, for example, Gmail from Google, then you click sign in with Google. Okay, the uh, registration is uh, on the other side, I think. Here, Where's the log in, yes. So and then for example, here, if you Gmail, then you select in. Sign, sign in with yeah. Gmail. Yeah, I but can just it, type now. Yes, log for in, example, if you user. use other email, then you use uh, login using one time password in email. Then it should send a password to your email account. My remember account. To, you yes, have remember to input. So yes. for students who register with um with uh with your academy with that email address, only those email register with those email address can uh receive the one time password. For example, if you did not um insert an email address with the one time password, then you use login using username and password using the dummy account. So for Farah's case, you yes. should use the dummy account which we assign you using a uh, login, using username and password. Okay, can you just let me know uh, uh, what's my uh, username once again? So I can show the students. Yes. Here, it will be you and my username. Yes. Or I you have to go username. Username and password yes. here. Yes. Yes. Username. Yes. Your username will be, be capital U and A. Capital U and A. And then capital A. Capital A. C A. C A. C A, yes. E. Underscore five. Underscore five. Yes. And now my password is one, two, three. Password will be capital U. Capital U. Yes. And then under slow lowercase n and a lowercase l and a yes and then capital a again then capital a c a lowercase c a account and uh, something popped up and it said number of texts uh, number of tasks five the lesson is about to start that's great, great. that's great, great. wonderful that's great. You in. yes 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 what about me <laughs> i'm not able to don't worry send. i'll i'll send you the yeah you can send me the uh, password and username okay but for others Maybe, but this is the right, this is the right, uh, uh, this is the platform and the login uh, uh, steps to, yeah, okay, thank you. I just get, I'm just signing in using my mobile. Actually, anyway. your, your username and password is on the screen. Yeah, you can just uh, see it like uh, the, is Una ACA underscore five. Yeah, maybe, I also, maybe uh, can, can highlight well. it. Yeah, can highlight okay. it. 
Yeah. Fine, fine, fine. Okay. Fine. So I understand it's the first time, so it may have some, uh, not as um, comfortable. So I think after a few more practice, then things will be smooth a lot. Yes, of course. I will use it from my end. So we have uh, we have Nuruddin, he signed in already. Yes, so I see uh, Nuruddin, you're using yes. a student number four. I can see you are online already. Yeah, okay. Uh, I will just try to uh, to sign in from here, from my mobile, or I, I have to write them here. Uh, one more time here. Um, Ms. Farah, uh, would you mind to put me as a co-host as well? I, I would like to try enabling the, the chat room, yeah, to see if it will work. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Fine, uh, you can uh, just uh, share your screen now if you want to follow with your with the students. I'm already there, I have signed in. Okay. So I see uh, students seven and eight are also logged in. That's, so that's eight. good. No issues. So uh, Farah, you should, when you logged in, you should see uh, a session yes. which says- um, I'm already maybe. there. Kelly, Kelly session. can log in and then just show everybody how to click the class. So Vera, can you see the session? Yes, yes. Okay. I'm already there in the session. So the can lesson. you click? Yes. Workshop number one, Michael. Bit. Already I am in the session. That's good. So I see you, number four. That's yes, good. yes, yes. Already number there. four, five, seven, and eight are there. Okay, great. So I no, think uh, Kelly, you can show to the class that... Um, some of the students already logged in. Mm -hmm. So in today's uh, class, we arranged that um, we work no. in force so we can uh, help each other out during the coding task. So anybody what else have difficulties logging in? You can share your screen now. I will stop sharing and you can share your screen back. Yeah, I'm seeing Kelly's screen. So can everybody see Kelly's screen? Okay. So I can see Kelly's screen. Yes. So Kelly right now is uh, using as a teacher to see if everybody's online. Yes. So if you're not paying attention, we, we are aware of that. This means that I am student for Yes, you are student four. Okay. Okay. Okay, that's great. Right. So I'm using student one, so I'm online as well. So we have uh, six students at the moment. So anybody else have problem logging in or forgot the username and password? So, uh, so Vera, so shall we start? Okay, so Kelly, let's start the class. Okay, so now I... Yes, we're starting to have some changes that we are in the task one right now. And I'm going to have a small introduction on today's class. Today we are going to learn some basic input and output in writing the program. So I see some of you got the microbit at your home. And 
I'm going to give you some challenging question first. So you can see on my screen, I will give you two examples first. So the first example on input is the elevator. So when we press the numbers on the button on the elevator, and this is one kind of input. And then what is the output after we press the button? Is that the elevator will bring us to the floor we want to go? Or is the elevator will arrive? OK. And the second example for input and output is your smartphone. So the input is when we tap on the play button. This is a kind of input that we press on it. And then the output will be playing the song we choose. So this is two examples on input and output. And I would like to ask students that can you give me an example? Input and output. You can just unmute yourself and then shout out the answer. Can yeah, anybody thought of any examples um, in our daily lives that have input and output process? Who would like to share the answer? You can unmute yourselves. Can you give an example about an input and output? Maybe any machine at home? Kelly, I'll give a try. Um, the electric fan, the switch Wait, on the fan so, is that so, and then the fan will move. So what is the input action? You press uh, the, button the button and then the, oh, and then, and the uh, output is? I get cool down. Hmm. From the fan. And the output hey, is the fan will start to move. Like and the washer. Or something. The clothes, the washer. Pardon? Like the clothes washer. Yes, yes. Okay. So you washing machine. Somebody... Washing machine, yes. yes. So washing so machine. Turn on, the washing oh, machine. on the computer. Yes, when you press on the buttons and the washing machine will start to move and then to rotate to clean your clothes and the output is some um, clean clothes. Or maybe you go to a vending machine that you input some money in it and then the output is your food or your drinks. So today, the first task we are going to do is to build up a little program to have some input and output. So you can see from the PowerPoint, we got different input blocks. One is in blue, it writes on start on it. And then the other one is on button A press and on shake. So you can see there is a microbe on the top right hand corner. You will see there is a button A on the left hand side and a button B on the right hand side. So this is some kind of input that I may, um, some of you may got the microbe at home and that I'm going to show you the, the real one. And then here are the two buttons that we can press on it. So this is one kind of input method. And then it got some sensors that can feel we are shaking on it. So this is the other kind of input for the microbe. And for the output method, we are going to show something on the LED lights. So where are the LED lights? Can anybody spot out? Where can you see the LED lights of the microbe? So you can see there are some silver dots on it. And here are the, my, are the little LED lights. And it got 25 of them. So we're going to, to do a mini program now to make use of the buttons and the LED lights to have an input and an output. 
So this is an example on how to make this program. We are going to use pressing a button as an input and to show a smiley face as an output. Okay. So now we're going to back to our programming space. So first I'm going to introduce some features on this unit platform. So the first thing you will see is the microbe emulator on the And then you will see it's moving. And here is where we can see our program, how it runs. Okay, you need to give me some time for my computer to load. Okay, so maybe you can see from the screen first. So other than the microbe emulator, next to it is a column of blocks. So we have divided them into different categories. We will got basic, input, and the other categories. And then when you press inside, you will see there are different kinds of blocks. Just take basic and, as an example. When you press it out, you will see show number, show LEDs and show icon, etc. That these are the blocks that you can use to make your program. And the last feature is that you will see there is a blank space. And here is your programming space. You can just drag out the program the programming blocks out. Okay. And then now we're going to do what the PowerPoint give us as an, as an example. So first we are going to use the press button A block. So you should press on the input category, which is in light purple. And then you will see the first one is named as on button A pressed. Can everybody see this block? After you find it, you can just drag it out and then to put it in here, the blank space. And then after that, we are going to show a smiley face. So for the output, output are usually in light blue block. And the first block and the first four blocks are the blocks we usually use for doing some output on numbers. On LED lights, you can design it by yourself, showing some icon and you show a string. A string you can input some wordings, maybe your name or any kind of wordings, the symbols. So in this case, I'm going to use the show icon to show a smiley face. So you should put the blocks according to their outer shape. And every successful program should have their color on it. So for the show icon, you can press on the heart and then you can see different kinds of icon you can choose from. So after you think you have done your program, you can test it from the microbit emulator on the left. And when I press the button A, I should see a smiley face. So you can just follow the PowerPoint as in like a hint, or you can design the icon you wanna put on it. And I'm like giving you around five minutes to, to try to show other things. And then once you encounter any problem that you can just unmute yourself and then
feel free to ask. Uh, for the ones uh, that they would like to share their uh, task, we can give them the permission as well. Maybe Nuruddin, if he's done, I can give you the permission to uh, share your screen. And oh, no show need. Oh, no I need. Can, Kelly I can, can actually open, open Nuruddin's work. Okay. Yes, great. It, it, so Nuruddin, your number four or five. Taking uh, lots and lots of time to load. Can Come again, please. Can you click refresh and then can you see? It's taking uh, lots of time. Still loading? Yes, loading. Okay. So I think, uh, Kelly, we can maybe look at uh, student number seven's work. Okay. Oh, student, student number seven, you got two, two big blocks. So you can see there is one is named as button A pressed and the other one is button B pressed. So can you just explain what will happen when you pressing the both, the two buttons? Would you like to try to share to the other classmates? So, so who is number seven? Nuruddin, you are number seven. You told me I am four. Four, ah, okay, fine. So who, who is know, number seven? Huh? Anyway, we can share the screen for number seven to show. So uh, maybe Kelly, we can on your on your teacher account, you can press A and then try out number seven's as work. Okay. Hi everyone, can you hear me? Hello. Yes. yes. Hello. Uh, so Hi. hello, uh, I'm Suhir. I'm student number seven. Okay. I'm from Tunisia. Hello. Hello everyone. Uh, so, so I. Thank you for your work. Thank you for you. When, uh, when I press A, it shows me uh, an icon and uh, smile, he's happy. And when okay. I uh, click on B, it's a sad smile. There are two mm -hmm. uh, input and two outputs. Okay. Oh, that's a great, that's a great program because you have discovered a new input method and then you try to show something is different. One is a smiley face and one is a sad face. So everybody should uh, try to discover the other blocks. So how is they're going to work, okay? What about number four? Would you like to share your uh, uh, your image? Number four? Do you want to share? Yes. Can you load Yuna now? Share screen one. Okay, I okay. Opera. It the it, it didn't work. Can you load you now? It didn't load and it didn't work. Are you using uh, Google Chrome as the browser? No, I am using Opera. iPad. Okay. So we can see you log into you now. So you, I can see a uh, number four. You just log out. Okay, I will press it again. Okay.
It's okay, and it, everyone can do this mini program to have an input and have an output. Anyone encounter some problem? Nuruddin, can you uh, see Yuna and then you can drag the block on button A press? Can you do it? So Nuruddin, can you drag some block? Can you go to task one? It, it's not working. It's taking uh, lots of time to load. So it's still loading? Yes. Okay. So you're using an iPad, right? No, PC. PC, okay. Yeah. It worked finally. It worked. Okay, okay, that's good. Okay, stop sharing. So maybe after oh, yeah. you finish your uh, coding, you can let us know, and then Kelly can share your code your work with the class. So Kelly can go on with the second task and Nuruddin, take your okay. time to finish. You can just select the face that you want. Is it smiley or sad or whatever? So Nuruddin, okay, so I see that you use the music block at the moment. So I will we'll wait a bit for your uh, finished product. Yes. So maybe Kelly, we can go to task two first. Give okay, Nuruddin so some time. So for task two, how do we go to task two? Also, oh, can everybody see the bottom right hand corner? You see a submit button, right? And then right next to it, when you press to the task one, and then you will see a list pop up. And then this is where you can change to task two. So after you change to task two, you will see the title become input to make music. So remember the example I have just introduced to you, that we will press the play button and then the output is the music playing out. So in this task, we're going to use the music block, which is in orange. You can choose to use different types of music blocks to play your own melody. So you will see the program is uh, similar to what we have just built up. But this time we are going to use different input methods and to use the music blocks. So it's some little different be with the last task we have just used. So for the music is the first one. And then when you are testing your program, remember to turn on your, to turn on your mic, and then to make sure you can hear the music that you have just, just created. So you will have some different choices for your music block. So the first one will be under the tone, you will see play tone middle C for one bit. 
So for this block, when you pull out, you can choose the choose the node. When you press on the middle C, and then it should pop up a mini piano. Then you can choose the note. And then you can hear it. And then secondly, you can choose how long the bit will be played for. So maybe you can choose one bit, half a bit, or a quarter bit. And then for the input method, you can choose to use on um, button A pressed, on um, button B pressed, or you can use the other one on shake. So this is up to you. And then you should note that your program should be with color. The program, which is in gray, it, it won't work. You will see the block is disabled. And you should build the blocks according to its outer shape. So other than the play tone for one bit, you can also use the block scrolling down and then you should see a melody advanced. You can use the start melody repeating once this block to build your music. So when you press on the da da doom, and then you will see there are different types of music and melody. And then you can choose one of them to play it for once to make your program. So in this case, we are going to have the input method as pressing the button, and then the output will be playing the music out. And now I'm going to give you some time and then you can design on your own music. So Kelly, why don't we have a look at Uadine's work? Are you done, Uadine? Student number four, you ready to show the class? Okay, I'm going to have a peek on it. Almost. Okay. Kelly, I think we can look at, uh, for task two, we can look at uh, number uh, student seven. Okay. So I can see that uh, student seven use a new input method, the on hmm. shake. Yes, I can see you use the on shake. So when you guys are using the on shake as an input method, you can put your cursor on it. And then when you drag it above the, the micro bit emulator, it will like move a bit to pretend we are shaking it. Or if you uh, don't want to put your cursor on it, you can just press the shake. It should pop up on the button B above it. And then she also write the program to press button A and then to play the middle D for one bit. So 
So if you accidentally use some music block and then you find that your music your music doesn't stop, then you should use the red or to control it for one bit for play tone middle C for one bit to control the length of your bit. So Nuruddin, are you ready to show us your work? Can we show it to the class? And I, it's, um, it's not making a, a sound. I don't know why. It's okay, so let us have a look at your work. Just lighting LEDs. Okay. Okay. So I see that you've done it in task one. Uh, it's not, I, I did this one to try if it works because sometimes it doesn't. I put, uh, I, I got the um, A button, A and, uh -huh. A and B are the same. I pressed A, nothing happened. So right now I see that your screen, you have to play melody. You have the on button A, so you can play a song. And then for so your second the block, the toggle. To use. I made this to try if it works, but the sound okay. is working. So the sound is not working. Is because this block is, you I need had, to light up some of them. I had it connected to my computer and connected to the battery, so I don't know why. So you so have an output for your micro bit. So where can the sound come up from your micro bit? You find a spot for it. So you need to make the sound by the computer, right? Your micro bit doesn't have a speaker on it. So how can yes. your micro bit produce some sound? So, so for Just sound, if you want to play on. sound. Connected. So even though so it, you because, to... because the micro bit itself does not have a speaker. So if you use any uh, melody blocks which have music, it will broadcast through the computer instead. Uh, if I put let, I put so You can try instead of using the music, you can try maybe show an icon and then download to the micro bit. And then on the LED, it will show the icon. Okay, let's. Okay. So you can try from, from basic, choose the one which has the show LEDs. Okay, I'll try to see. And then you can make an icon, make an image. Example. So Kelly is writing a K. It, it, it's just saying hello. It's not working. No, you have to download the file to the micro bit first. Yeah, I, I downloaded it. It works on Scratch program. It works on other programs. But it's not working on, it, on this program. So when you download the hex file, you have to drag it onto the micro bit to replace the old one. I have it. If I go to microbit, I have all the details, and I okay. downloaded. I downloaded a, some something called Scratch Microbit. Do I have to download something else? Okay. Is it playing the the icon which you download? Um. Uh, no, it's not. No. 
Sorry, Nuri Dean. What about just throwing the uh, example that Kelly just showed to us? Shown to us. Okay. Just to try to use the music here. This just button. Just try using the emulator. Don't download on the micro bit. Let's yes. just do it one step at a time. Give it a try. No, not working. So currently, I see that on your screen, you have the on button A press, and then it will display an icon, right? Yes. Try again. I am clicking A. Nothing. Yes. Let me, me try. Should I try it on another program? Yeah, try and no, try another program on the computer first before downloading on the micro bit. Okay, I'll try. Okay. Meanwhile, we have to move to another task. Okay. Try on this program. Let me see. If it works. So students who complete the task two, you can go to task three now. But yes. remember to submit if you finish task two. Anyone else would like to share task two? Anyone else would like to share task two? So let us start with task three, I think. And Nuri Dean, you will share your tasks after task three, okay? I so. want to ask a question. Excuse me, come again. Does the microbit need the Bluetooth to work or just connected with a cable and it also works? No, you need to connect the cable, one side to the micro bit, one side to your computer. And then you download the file, drag it to the micro bit. It, like, is Bluetooth needed? Pardon? The Bluetooth is not needed for the micro bit. Bluetooth is not needed if you have the USB cable. Oh. So for student completed task two, you can now submit your your program at the bottom right hand corner. You can just press the submit, and then after you have submitted it, you can change to task. You can switch to task three, pressing on the button next to submit, and then you will see the list. It should name as rock paper and scissors. So this task is gonna be challenging for all of you because it's going to use some new blocks we have never introduced. So do you, so, so everybody play rock, rock, paper, scissors before, right? So everybody play, played it before and then you'll use your fingers to play the rock, paper, and scissors. So can anyone tell me how many possible outcomes are there? Name one of them. Rock is number one of them. Yes. So we got three possible outcomes. So you can't play different kind of outcomes. Then maybe you can't play like this. This is not one of the outcomes. You will only got rock, paper, and scissors. Okay, so as there is only three outcomes that we are going to use the random block. So anyone can spot out there are different types of blocks on this PowerPoint. So we just now introduced the light purple one, that is the input. And then the basic, which is in light blue. And then you find different colors right here. We 
if you find different colors, you can unmute yourself and tell me. So I'm going to answer one of them is the purple one, the darker purple. It says pick random one to three. So this block is come from the category math and it's gonna to pick random numbers. So I, here I set it to one to three because there are only three outcomes from rock, paper, scissors. Okay, we won't got the fourth outcome. And then so anyone else can follow different colors on it other than the light purple, the darker purple and the light blue. So let me tell you the other one is in red. This is not orange, it's red. This is named as variables. So I'm going to uh, make this important because variables is something unique, just like our name. And this is a box, the box with a unique name. So we shouldn't have two variables with the same name or else we gotta be confusing the program. So we're gonna to store something inside this variable. We name it as random, as you can see from the screen. And then the last kind of block is named as conditional blocks, which is in green. So this is a checking block, help us to check something whether it's correct or not. So in this case, you can see the first line showing if random equals to one. So it's doing a checking job to check whether the box name as random is storing the number one. If it is storing the number one, it's gonna to show the left with a square in the middle that we name as like a rock to display different patterns. So why random will equal to one? Because we set it to pick a random number, one to three. Did I make myself clear? Somebody, somebody doesn't know or can't get it. You can just unmute yourself and then let me know. Because this is quite complicated and challenging. And then for the second case, we will see else if random equals to two. That means it's going to check whether random the box random is storing number two. If it is number two, it will show the scissors pattern. And then the last one will be else. It means if random doesn't equal to one and two, that means it, is, it must be number three, that it will show the paper pattern. Okay, so anybody got some question would like to ask? So in this task, we are going to make this paper, rock, scissors program. And then you can drag these blocks one by one in that column. So back to our programming space. First of all, we will take the input block, which is in light purple. So we're going to use on shake or button A is pressed and I'm going to use on shake this time. So after that, I've just mentioned the variable, which is in red and it's the second last one. So you can just follow my steps. So when you press on the variables and then you will see it tells you to make a variable. And remember, Maybe variable must because be um, we're kind of running out of time. So let's uh, mm. try to finish this task in five minutes. And then if some students, you can uh, 
follow Kelly and then um, after class, you can do it at your own time as well. So we're going to make a variable now and then you can just name it like your name or I would just name it as random. And then we can take the second one, set random to zero and then put it on shake, inside on shake. So the random number is gonna be uh, random from one to three. So you will get this from the darker purple one, which is math. And then you should scroll it down and then to find pick random. And then you can put it on this oval slot and then change it into one to three because we only got three options, rock, paper, scissors. And then in case if you forgot what you are going to do, and then you can just go back to the to the PowerPoint. You remember this PowerPoint? So now after we have set it, and then we can start to do the checking to check whether random is equal to one, two, or three. So we will take the green block, which is named as logic, and then take the second one. If true, then that one and then with an else underneath it. And we got three conditions, so we need to press the plus to make one more hexagon slot. So after that, we need to make some comparison for this block to do some checking work. So you go back to the column with the logic and then take the hexagon block showing zero equals to zero. And you put it on the true. So we're now going to check whether random is equal to one. So we need to get a random word. And this word is inside variables, which is like in oval, and then drag it to the zero. So check it whether equals to one. And you're gonna change the number behind it. So you need to fill up the other hexagon slot with one more hexagon. And then you need to put it inside and then check whether this time random is equal to two. And then after that, so if random is equal to one, we're going to make it to equal to show the rock pattern. And then you can just draw the pattern that you think is, is representing the rock. And then you can draw the second pattern for number two that may represent the scissors. And then the last one to represent the pattern paper. So this part is going to uh, be like a little maybe, challenging. Maybe uh, memorize the answer, which Kelly just did on the screen, or, or you, you can, can just refer to the PowerPoint. Tap screen. You can just take a picture of it. And then you can finish off the coding task after the class. So um, for task four is a project task. So we, we introduce uh, various input method and also the if statement. So you can use task four to create your own coding. And then uh, before we wrap up the class, we, I also want to uh, have a short uh, introduction about our full curriculum on the micro bit on task five. So on task five, you can see that there's some evaluation questions. So we feel free to give us some comments for improvement. And then um, uh, next slide, please, Kelly. 
So we, we want the students to understand that uh, for micro bit, we can build various devices. For example, you can do some programmable cars, some football goal scoring machine using the micro bit and various sensors based on the input and also the if statement, which we uh, introduced today. So uh, next slide. So um, other than today's class, which is one of the lesson for STEM beginner, we also have um, other curriculum. In the STEM beginner, we want uh, students to understand various uh, sensing devices, so such that they can uh, use these various sensing devices built in from the micro bit to create some uh, basic coding, so such that you can train up computational thinking. And then moving on, we can connect with sensors. And then in next week's class, we also prepare an AI class for you guys to uh, try out some face recognition and object detection. Next slide. So our full course on the micro bit consists of uh, 10 lessons. And then each lesson uses uh, stories and compu uh, computational uh, theories to explain uh, for example, what's if statement, what's condition, what are loops, et cetera. And then um, you can also click in onto the website on the top. So these can all be accessed in task five in the PowerPoint. So once you click onto the website, you can see that uh, upon completion of the class, when you scroll down, you can see that there is a certificate which can be uh, issued to the students. So you can see that we provide certificate for all the students who have completed the 10 lessons towards the end of the course. So are there any questions for me and Kelly from, from the class today on the programming which we did or about the course which you want to know more about? Your account will be valid for, for, for uh, without any uh, expiration date. So feel free to log in onto Yuna using the account assigned to you today and complete the task and try out the platform. So if there's uh, no questions, I'll pass the, the host back to Farah. Okay, I would like uh, to thank you all, uh, dear students, uh, for uh, joining us today. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Dr. Jason, Kelly, Chell, all, all the team from uh, UNA platform. Uh, thank you for the students uh, from all over the world and hopefully that we will meet next week with a session with artificial intelligence. See okay. you all and have a good evening. Have a good evening, bye -bye. guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Take care, take care. See you next week. See next you. Time. Great. So Farah, thank you very much for today's arrangement. I understand it's the first time and then some of the students may have uh, difficulties doing the login. But I hope that maybe after the first class, the next class, they have, they feel more comfortable and things will be a lot smoother. Hopefully next time it will be, uh, they're going to be used to the platform as well. Yes. Thank you. Thank so, you so much. Any other maybe comments which or, or observation which you notice, which we can maybe improve before next class? Yes, anyone would like to have, uh, welcome to all suggestions, feedbacks and uh, comments. And if you would like to share your uh, your tasks, also you can send them by email as well. So here, Dahu, Dahu and Marwa Majdi. Thank you. Thank you. So Farah, the recording, you can send it to us afterwards, right? Okay, bye-bye everyone. Okay, great. And thank All you, right. thank you so much. Have a good evening. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.